Hey guys, welcome back to Sarcastic Husband's Reviews. Today I'm reviewing Destiny 2 Forsaken, the latest expansion pack uh, for the Destiny base game. This um, brings the level cap up, costs $40, and adds uh, some new story missions, new land, new place, um, and basically just expands the game a bit. Um, so, without beating around the bush, let's talk about the story. If you don't like what I'm about to say, skip to about a minute, minute and a half ahead. I will be spoiling the entire story campaign for this game because it's crucial to why I have such issues with Destiny, is this story. You basically start out on a uh, prison with uh, Cade 6 and you have a prison break and you're supposed to defend it. So you do a lot of funny things with Cade 6 who's probably the most memorable of all the destiny characters um, from what I remember he's definitely the most entertaining as he bumbles around and uses his gun and does all badass things well at the end of the mission he eats it by uh, Uden Saw the blue guy from the first game that we thought died but apparently didn't and uh, you go on a revenge mission uh, yep that's uh, that's pretty much the overall story um, here's comes where the spoilers if you didn't notice me before is uh, Saul did this whole thing, the blue dude, we're just going to call him blue dude from here on out, so that way he could bring his sister back. Yep. And it turns out, in a plot twist that came out of left field, that his sister is not coming back and he was tricked by a shape-shifting squid thing that looks like a butthole. And he gets eaten by the butthole. And you, you, you shoot him after that. But yeah, he, he gets eaten by the butthole. I'm not kidding. I'm showing a picture of it right now. It's a giant butthole. And that's the end of the story. Take you about probably anywhere between 10 to 12 hours, depending on your level and your grind. Um, there are some gear requirements, but uh, past that, it's uh, that's the story of Destiny 2. Yep, uh, Destiny 2 Forsaken, I should say. But there is more to this game than that. So now you know my opinion of the story of Destiny, but you're asking, well, what is there? Well. There are eight bosses, basically. Eight uh, cards, if you will. The, they're each a villain that was let out of the uh, Reef's prison. And, um, yeah, you pretty much go around and kill them. Each one has a different uh, flavor. One throws bombs. The other one, uh, the other one hides, bomb, hides explosive cases. She's a trickster, I think. Another one rides around on a on a bike of some sort, kind of like a like a like a Hell's Angel, if you will. But um, yeah, that's each one has a different flavor. Um, they're kind of hit or miss. Some were good, some were bad. Um, you know that 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 was amazingly the chunk, the core of the game. There was that. Um, you use it basically as a get the power level back up. That's about it. Gunplay's solid. Um, there's tons of new exotics, and there is a new weapon in the game. So this new weapon they got was actually a bow and arrow, and it's a compound bow, which really doesn't fit the western theme of this game, because this game has a very western firefly theme, which is even more strange because Nolan North is gone, is in uh, Cade 6 versus Nathan Fillion, but whatever. So this compound bow is basically what's used uh, is, is a new weapon you get after you complete the introduction mission with Cade 6 where he passes or where he gets shot. And um, you use it quite a bit and they put a ton of mechanics. It feels great. But here's the weird thing. They changed the upgrade mechanics. Now you need these things called master cores to upgrade your weapon. But they're dropped very, very sparringly. And you can buy them, but you have to use legendary cores to buy them. So you really have to think about whether or not you want to upgrade the weapon. Which is fine, but why would you put all this time into this bow that you can't really upgrade unless you spend all this time to upgrade, which means some people may or may not do it. It is very odd that they spent this much time on this, but, you know, that's what they did. And thus is where we are where we are. So, yeah, we have a bow that's phenomenal to use, a lot of fun but it's very difficult to upgrade because of the base system. Now, at the time of this recording, Bungie has acknowledged the Master Core system. Drops are not correct, and there's not enough in the economy to the amount that they like, so there will be a patch, supposedly this week or next week, depending on when this video goes out. But we'll see how it changes, and my opinion may differ. But overall, um, the bow is probably one of the best things in the game, and really adds a, a dynamic that hasn't been in Destiny in quite a while. 
So one of the new things that the Forsaken does do is a new multiplayer mode called Gambit. Right. Now it's kind of hard to explain. When you play it, you understand it. Basically, it's kind of like Horde mode with the exception that every time you kill a guy, you get a moat. One of these moats is used to uh, put into a pool, and this pool, if you enter enough moats at a different time, puts archdemons on the opposing team. Now you have two teams that are trying to get to the archdemon. First one that kills the archdemon wins. Um, with these moats, you can screw with the other team. You can open up portals, go to that other team's world, screw with them. Um, if you die, if you're carrying any moats, they go away. It's a lot of fun, and I found myself enjoying playing rounds and rounds and rounds about it. Um, there wasn't really anything amazing it did, but it was just really solid and fun. I kind of enjoyed it. Um, the other thing that this uh, expansion adds is it adds a new strike, and I think two, but I only played one. Uh, the new strike's fun. It's a lot of fun. They did a really good job. Um, I have not had a chance to get to the Dreaming City yet. I just unlocked it, um, but I will try and do some of that today. But um, from what I understand, it's very good, and I didn't feel it should really affect my review up or down. Um, but if you do do certain raids, I guess now, you the Dreaming City changes around on a week-to-week -week basis, which is really cool and, and gives a lot of um, focus and daily play for people um, daily rewards are still there they have weekly and daily rewards and challenges um, they're pretty simple they drop legendary equipment um, I believe the level cap right now is set to 50 with a light power of 600 some equipment will, will get you up there but it does take some time um, I found getting to 500 pretty quickly and there is a if you buy Destiny 2 Forsaken you get a one-time level boost so you can play all the Forsaken content because you do have to basically do all single player content get your character up a um, couple complaints that are still here from the base game are you can't replay single player story missions I find that stupid uh, and just asinine you can't replay single player story missions um, I don't know why they changed they haven't brought that in there but that is still in there so you can't do older missions once you've done them that's complete you don't get to see the cutscenes anymore um, the other issue is simply the microtransactions in this game are still there, and they're just a complete joke. The one-time use shaders, the Eververse, it's all still there. Um, it doesn't hurt um, the gameplay, but, you know, it is there, and they do kind of pre they try and get you to buy silver points to spend on the Eververse transactions. So, um, Ultimately, where I land on this expansion is if you're a fan of Destiny, this is more the same. If you're not a fan of Destiny or were turned off by the game, this isn't going to change your mind. If you're a lapsed fan like myself and say, hey, what do I think? You can go back to it, but um, probably only entertain you for about two, two to three weeks, depending on how long you, you focus in on it. Um, ideally, I would get it on a sale. Right now, it's $40, and that's a steep price for a DLC. I don't see a lot of benefit to it. Um, it's got some good points, it's got some bad points, but ultimately the price just seems too high. On top of it, and um, I don't have it on yet, but we need to talk about the annual pass. Destiny has an annual pass now, a yearly annual pass for $35, which includes more content. We don't know what this content is, and we don't have a timetable of its release as of this recording. Um, yeah, I'm not... The business model here isn't functioning for me. There's definitely not enough here to buy it new out the gate. Um, I would just wait to see what if it's worth it. I wouldn't buy it right now. So, um, ultimately, I would say if you uh, like Destiny, pick it up. If you don't like Destiny, just ignore it and play something else. All right, um, if you like the channel, give me a like, subscribe below. Um, I stream every so often with my uh, co-streamer, co Chiefy Spartan. We're working on Left 4 Dead this month and Left 4 Dead 2. Um, yeah, if you uh, guys really like the channel, let me know what you think. And uh, sorry for being video being so long. I had to fell, I had to get all my opinions out here with Destiny. And uh, yeah, that's it. I am not playing Destiny 2 for a while. It, it's I need a break. Anyways, that's Sarcastic Husband Show. Take it easy.